So here's, here's what's going to happen today. So we were looking at the nominees for basically the CMX industry awards. And we said like, huh, all these people seem to be nominated as the very best people in the chapter and user group world. Why don't we put them all on stage and pick their brains? Because obviously they're smart and wise. And uh, also it'll be a really easy event for us to plan. So that's the ambition here today. So what we've got here today are top experts in the community as recognized by their own peers within the community industry. Um, and I'm really excited to have them here. So what we're gonna do is sort of panel style thing where I'm gonna ask them questions, they're gonna answer, they're gonna tell us great stories, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna cry, it's gonna be amazing. Um, and we'll make sure that there's room for your questions as well. But uh, before we get too deep into this, why don't we get people to do some introductions? So I'm gonna start off and just say like, we've got three experts here. And so in expert land here, we've got Christina Garrett, who is the senior marketing manager for HubSpot. You may have heard of them. We've also got Ariana, who comes from Chorus, um, working in the community, sorry, the program coordinator role. And then we've got Varu, who is uh, initially came through C3 in the nomination period, but is now with Habitate um, and can talk a little bit more about the work she does as head of customer success for communities. So that's my really quick intro, but of course my experts are gonna tell you much more about themselves um, as we dive right into this. So uh, why don't we start off first with Christina because you're top of my little Brady Bunch windows. So you are trapped in the elevator with your CEO. Mm -hmm. Your CEO may have other things in the world and doesn't even know who you are and the work that you do at the organization. What is that 30 second pitch of who you are and the value you bring to your organization? Absolutely. So my CEO, Yamini, I am the fan of the fans. I'm able to bring together and identify our top customers and partners and be able to create an environment where they can upskill, they can connect with others and they can feel appreciated. HubSpot doesn't lack for love, but my job is to make sure that our customers and partners feel loved back. I hope they're paying you much more than they probably are, because that was fabulous. Varu, <laughs> over to you. Hello, everyone. So I'm Varulakshmi. I come from India. I have been into community building for about seven years. Now working with uh, Habitat, a startup, as head of cu customer success. Uh, while customer success and community seem to be a little bit different from each other, I actually help brands build successful communities. Uh, we just help them in order to start from the scratch or basically if the community is dead in order to like reactivate those communities and help the growing communities to sustainably grow. So this is something that I do on behalf of my company. And right now I also help them build their uh, user group program called Community and Cold Coffee. So that's something that I do predominantly with them, apart from uh, helping the brands. Yes, and we are also introducing chapters, uh, which is also going to be a little bit around the different niches we have brands with. So this is pretty much about me. That sounds interesting. And we should all show off by putting some links into the chat so the rest of us can like hunt you down and look at all the cool work we're doing. Ariana, you're trapped. This is your moment. Yeah, I'm not sure if mine's going to be as as glamorous as the last two, but I will try. Um, so I am Ariane. I work at Koros. I'm currently a program coordinator. Um, I when I started, my uh, remit was to create and build and implement the uh, our user group program, which we call Titans. Um, and since then, we've just been revamping and kind of just improving proving our offerings for what we're hearing from our customers. In addition to this, um, I also am acting as a project manager for our um, customer experience team where we improve our customer experience overall. Um, and that may, all of those projects looks very different. So I kind of have a few, a few hats that I wear, but um, those are the primary ones. Lovely. And yeah, as community managers often tend to have project management in our lives because uh, we got to get things done. Um, so it's a top skill. I'm also just getting some great feedback here from, um, from Piper Wilson, just saying like, hey, some of us are in pretty small startup-y places. So it, as you go through your answer, you can say like, how could this answer apply to both 
the enterprise, but also into some of the more small, scrappy organizations. So now I'm going to ask you the question that makes me cry. We're stuck in this COVID moment, and it totally destroyed my 120 chapters for my day job, um, where they were all meeting in person and had been for like the last 11 years. Obviously, that stuck, and we're only now trying to work our way out of that moment. Um, I'd love to get a sense from the, the, each of you. What is the status of your user group program right now? Is it healthy? Are you struggling? Ariana, what's it look like? Yeah, so we actually designed our um, user group program after the start of COVID. So um, everything we did was just vir like virtual and with that in mind, um, I would say that we're we're in a green, like a, we're a pretty healthy status. Um, we're just currently working on kind of building up and growing our program because it is fairly new after being launched um, in February of this year. So um, that's kind of the perspective I will I will bring. But right now it's growing users and kind of um, finding out more what they are interested in in gaining from this program. Right. And so you're really in the early days then. Mm -hmm. How yep. about for you, Christina, is this early days or is this like a veteran program right now? Mine is new. Um, we had, when I initially started earlier this year, we created the hub fans um, community for them and what that would look like. And then we scaled it up and added gamified experiences and, and new opportunities for them. The other groups that we have are hugs, our HubSpot user groups. We have, because of how we have it set up, they're facilitated across different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And we really encourage those specific chapters to really gauge what the needs of their audience is. Because we have such a global perspective of customers and partners, COVID actually has been beneficial hmm. because the need to connect has been incredibly important. But understanding that people are now able to jump on a Zoom call, jump in a bevy, jump yeah. into all of these other opportunities has been really great. And from my perspective, it's it's really been a strong connective piece for us because we all want to help. And we found, especially with inbound being virtual the past two years, yes, it's not the same as being in Boston and, and walking around the BCEC, but there's so many people who've got to experience inbound for the first time that never would have had a chance because it's virtual. So it's been a detriment in, in, in many ways for multiple companies, but I feel like it's for, for programs that really embrace their global audience, it's actually been a really positive change. Oh, that's interesting. And about what in your world, obviously you're working more with clients. You have multiple communities. So, so what's it been looking like for those communities? Right. So, Canadian uh, goal enthusiasts and community leaders as such. So, uh, we started this program five months ago, exactly as you know, it's pretty new as well. Uh, but luckily, you know, with COVID and specifically in India, where the second wave was pretty bad, people desperately wanted to connect with someone who would really resonate with what community is. They've been like longing and yearning to be connected to different people at this point of time. Uh, you know, it's kind of growing, it's shaping up. The only uh, that, you know, we, we thought that it, it, it is missing is that offline is like there's a personal connect and all that but other than that like i do agree with christina as well because this has been a pretty much a boon for us in terms of like we were able to connect with uh, 70 community enthusiasts in the span of five months and uh, from across 16 to 17 states and in fact we were able to uh, you know talk to different founders who were actually also interested in uh, nurturing a community so it's, it's been definitely a, a great ride for us in the past five months. And the way it's growing right now is also pretty much in the good side and the positive side of it. So much newness and so much people like seeing this as the opportunity, as you say, like we're desperate for community now as we get sort of stuck in our own work lives and our own separate worlds there. Um, so that's really exciting that, that organizations are investing in community and really putting energy in during this time, as opposed to sort of retreating as some organizations might have. So where, where is this community and what do they do? Like this, I think, you know, the other question I've got, and now, you know, sometimes there's multiple communities, but Christina, 
first of all, they're called hugs. Hugs are great. Mm -hmm. That is a good name for anything. Um, so I love that a lot. Mm -hmm. What does the hugging look like? And where is the hugging happening? It's, ha it's happening within the HubSpot community. If you go to events.hubspot.com, you'll be able to see all the events that they have. And they have these opportunities where in the past they've been in person, now we're virtual. Um, but you have this opportunity to be able to connect. And a lot of what is really foundational about HubSpot, as well as our user groups, is knowledge and knowledge sharing. We really come from a place of we want to help each other out. There's not one single HubSpot user that knows absolutely every single thing. There's constantly new features. There's constantly new additions. And so we really want to be have a place where not only can HubSpot be a tool for knowledge, but our users can be have the opportunity to showcase that they're thought leaders, that they're subject matter experts. So you'll have webinars that feature partners. You'll have webinars that feature customers that, that aren't attached to a partner agency. But then you'll also have networking events where it's just like, I just want to jump into a meeting and just talk shop and just vent and talk about like struggles that we're having. The community has really been a, a great place for, for all of our users. We also have people who are taking HubSpot Academy classes. A lot of the new classes that we have, we have moments in that where we invite them to join the community and, and be a part of these study groups where now you can take these learnings and now you can talk about them and essentially almost create like cohorts of fellow people taking these classes. And so for us, it's a matter of these are people who I can learn from. These are people who will, will help me. These are people who maybe I need, and, and we see this a lot, we have like hackathons. And what we're going to be doing with my group specifically is next year, we're going to be doing quarterly hackathons where we say, all right, this is, tell us what problems you're having. I don't know how to create a workflow for this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would use this feature or what, what does my tech stack need to look like? that in order for HubSpot to work the best for me. Right. So we want to be able to create those moments where you can say like, hey, I'm a free CRM user. How can I do this with this for this specific subject problem? And right. have people come in and be like, we have experts that are going to show you right now exactly how to do that. They're going to share our screen and we're going to walk you through step by step because we have tons of videos and tons of, of certifications. But to be able to have like, almost like a one-to-one -one feeling of I'm going to troubleshoot this for you is priceless for users. Yeah. And, and I desperately need guidance. When yeah. I look at that HubSpot Academy, I'm like, oh, where do I start with all this? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on there. <laughs> Christina, yeah. can I, yeah. go ahead. Can yeah. I jump, can mm -hmm. I jump in just to understand because you mentioned that so we have the um, hugs that are um, mm -hmm. long, long uh, term, like program that we already know. And you mentioned, so mm -hmm. the current new program is, HubSpot fans? Yes, these they're hub fans. Mm -hmm. It's an advocacy and, program for our customers and partners. So like, what's the difference between the two programs? So hugs are region specific or local specific. So they're based off of where you're located. So we have like, we have a doc hug that is doing an AMA in our community this week. We have a Boston hug. We have a Cleveland hug. We have, um, we have, a German hug, we have an Australian hug, Perth hug, all those things. And so they tend to be location specific. You can go in and join those events, even if you're not in there to kind of see and see what it looks like for you. But it tends to be more specific to webinars or specific challenges, or maybe let's say that there's a huge commercial real estate issue that's happening in Boston. And so the Boston hug says, it's something I know a lot of our, our current local users are facing. Let's have something that's specific to that. Whereas with mine, it's open to anybody. And so if you are a customer and partner and you're a fan, if you love HubSpot, we want to not only be able to create a place for you to connect and learn, but we also want to create opportunities for you. Do you want to speak at, a, at an external event? Do you want to be a beta tester? Do you want to be able to do a survey about how you feel about the podcast network? Constantly want to give them liquidity. So we're moving past swag. A lot of, a lot of, SaaS, a lot of SaaS companies the entry point for we love you back is swag. And HubSpot's been lucky enough that a lot of our customers and partners have been with us for years. They have all the mugs, they have all the hoodies, they have all yeah. the things. Swag is not How a sustainable relationship. Yeah. Yes. So Ariana, where is your community right now? Like what platform and are you all in one place or are you scattered across seven different platforms? Yeah, so I actually feel like ours is very similar after listening to Christina. Um, 
So currently we have ours um, on our single Coros platform. Um, so on Atlas is our, Atlas is our community. And then um, the Titans have their own um, group hubs or space to kind of connect with each other. And so um, really our, our goal with that too was the providing them with the space to not only connect um, because we also have customers all around the world um, and for them, for them to have a place to connect at any time, um, but also to share the thought leadership and share expertise, um, which is something that we're actually currently working on developing more of is um, them being able to identify like what they feel they're an expert on, um, including that in their profile. So then they can be the sneeze um, that if, if someone has a question, they'll reach out to them or we know to refer to them um, with those questions. So um, that was that's one goal. Another one that we had is also being able to provide them with a space um, for not only like online networking, but um, having events where once a month they can um, actually get together and similar to um, similar to the hugs. Um, kind of program that you were just talking about, Christina. Uh, ours is also geographic with these customer roundtables that we do, these networking events, um, because folks in Australia might not be able to attend um, a meeting in the US. And so that's something that was a priority for us is we want everyone to be able to have the opportunities to feel included um, and to connect with other folks. And so, um, I, and I, the goal to with that too is that then once maybe the world opens back up a little bit more um, we can encourage those folks in those local areas um, to maybe meet in person um, or for them them to maybe have now a professional contact to interact with one-on-one -on -one. Um, our our structure is a touch different um, we have different levels we have four different levels that you can um, level up into with kind of a gamification foundation to it um, and so our requirements are um, really just them being engaged in um, attending like product coaching sessions or uh, different events or webinars so that not only can we increase um, the visibility of what we're doing across the entire company, um, but also now there's the benefit to them of also we want to like we want the cooler swag, we want the cooler name, um, we want to be a, like a level four, like legendary Titan and um, have the perks that come along with that, which include um, exclusive, exclusive access to um, certain like certain events or um, like priority support request, et cetera. So um, th that's really the, the basis of, of the Titans program. Right. So, so that actually brings me into the next thing, um, which is, you know, let's just keep this in the frame of the actual, the chapter hosts. Like, you know, that's where my obsession is. Like, and eh, the attendees, they're invisible to me. I don't really know. But, you know, my 100 who actually do the work, those are my people. So what is the most valuable thing you can actually offer in your in your program to, to your hosts? Like, Barry Lakshmi, you've got a couple programs you got there. What do you find is the most valuable offering you can make to those chapter leaders that, that really keeps them around, builds retention, and, and gets their attention? Right. That's that's an amazing question, Eli, because, uh, you know, that that's that's very difficult to maintain when it comes to retention part. Right. So our program is designed in a way that, uh, you know, every single person is given an equal responsibility. So to start with, uh, you know, our format flows like this. We have a micro event, which is six to seven members who are community enthusiasts. It's not necessary. They should be knowing community, but they're fascinated about the concept of community. And there's also leaders who are in this field. We discuss together in the round table uh, format, and then we try to pick a particular topic and talk about it. The entire philosophy or the vision of this particular user group program is nothing but taking community. Like in India, community is pretty new concept. It's just been one, one and a half years old uh, here. So in order to make that vision like very stronger, to take it to the different set of people over here, uh, we've tried to like gather during this user group programs where we try to 
expanded through the chapters. For example, we did not take up chapters based on the regions. We have taken chapters based on the niche. We wanted to take chapters based on SaaS communities. We wanted to take chapters based on creator community. We want to take chapters based on interest community, brand community, support communities, because even the brands in India would want to get more and more educated around it. So we are trying to build a virtual library and a crowdsourced content from across the men by creating a mentor mentee relationship with the folks that we are actually uh, bringing into the uh, conversation. And we are trying to like what uh, Ariana and uh, Christina said, there are amazing swags. In fact, we have, uh, you know, identified people who've been very active. Uh, we give them chief ha community happiness officer, community memes officer. We see their strengths and we kind of distribute the, the responsibilities accordingly. So that way they are happy that, you know, the, the strength is getting played. They are also able to expand their network. They're also able to basically do something in the community uh, apart from what they're doing at their work. Because as I again said, we are in India and the community space is a little bit smaller right now. And most of the times we get to uh, marketing or social media alongside community. So they kind of take this as an opportunity to, to learn more of community management, to interact with different community leaders across different states, and also build a community as such along with us. So that's right. something that I see. Right. So it's not swag that they most valued, but actually mentorship and connection to other people, exactly. to, to those peer relationships is what exactly. is what keeps people around there. Christina, is that what you're seeing in your community right now? Or they're like, oh, no, no, I'm tired of other people. Like, I just want like a fancy sticker. <laughs> Um, it definitely ranges, I think, depending on where they are in their, their member journey, if they are just lurking, like to get, to get from a lurker to someone who's contributing, that could be a badge, that could be gamified points or th something like that. But if you're talking about those hosts, those hug hosts, we're talking about our top advocates, we have a top tier group called our hub fans council. And it's hand selected based on their activities within and without the um, outside of the community. But then also, are they representing us online, on social media? Are they sharing our content, things like that? And what I find most, it, the most valuable thing, it doesn't work for everybody, but it's access. Hmm. When the whole, the whole idea of like someone wants a seat at the table, it's the seat at the table they want. So my Hub Fans Council acts as an advisory board. They, they're the ones who are going to do the more difficult ask. They're the ones who are going to respond to a tweet that's asking a question about HubSpot. They're the ones who are going to go into an AMA and ask questions and share their thoughts on something. But in response to that, I need to give more than I'm taking. And so I created a correspondence program for Inbound where we had top subject matter experts represent us at Inbound. And if you didn't get to go or if you went but you couldn't go to multiple sessions at once, you had people that were subject matter experts who were able to be the hero for you, who were able to share, these are the takeaways. These are the things that I thought were the most important. This was, this was what I, I thought that everyone should have attended. And so in addition to that, we do regular surveys with them. And, and we talk about like, if I have a plan, as soon as it's approved, I talk to them about it. Is this something that you want? Is this something that you like? What is the direction of this? And so the top advocates not only do those heavy lift things, but they very clearly understand that they are a part of what the future of the program is going to be like. Right. They're going to help drive it. And for them, that gives them that seat. Right. So it's access both ways. They get to both shape the program and also get access to like what's actually happening, early sneak peeks at, at the newest developments. Um, Ariana, for you, what, are, what keeps people in this role as a chapter host? Yeah, I I don't know if I can even elaborate more on what Christina just said. I think I think everything that we're doing and everything that I can see um, for like the desires and wants of our our users and our members um, have. But <laughs> Christina just covered them perfectly. Um, so I the only other thing I might I might add to that is the like professional development aspect to it as well, um, where they are engaged and um, they're learning and they're being a resource to the rest of their teams, um, maybe outside of the outside of the community or outside of the group. Um, How are and you supporting people in that role of being that sort of that that expert? Oh yeah. Um, 
Well, for that, I mean, we are offering them opportunities to, um, we are also looking at this mentorship opportunity that um, has been touched on, where they're kind of assigned someone that's new to the program. Um, And so now that's an opportunity for them to not only help onboard and kind of build um, the knowledge of this this new person to our group, um, but just enhances kind of their ability to um, be in that role and to achieve the like the status of um, I really am the expert here um, because I'm teaching all of these things mm. and I'm kind of molding this person into uh, like a, a top like a top community user, um, which then comes back to their like progress and their success in their own, in their professional world, where that can be taken to their supervisors, their leadership and, um, demonstrated that they like, that's their way of demonstrating their, their success. So, um, I, that's the only other piece I would kind of add to, to that. Right. So give people a real chance to do that career development, like build Mm -hmm. that into the actual program. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Michael Adams, I would love it if you could come on Mike in a moment and actually ask your question if that works for you. But I'm in the meantime, while you're figuring that out, I'm going to ask one more question and then we'll pop into some of the Q and A for a moment. So one of those questions is how do you actually identify those top leaders who come in to be chapter hosts? Is this just a open application? You're like, fill out this form or are you, chasing after people, making some personalized invites. Is this like an open invitation or or is it more closed? Um, Ariana, what's it look like for your group? Yeah, so we have we have base level requirements for um, for access to, to make it just a little bit more exclusive um, and have a little bit more mystery kind of behind it and desire <laughs> around wanting to be in the program. Um, but what that looks like is we we really just look at their um, their the the data that we have on them for um, their participation in events, um, webinars, how, like how many posts they make on the community. Um, and so we're looking for those those top people that are the most engaged with, with us and with what we're doing. Um, and then for the ones for our outreach um, to not only increase like the visibility into the program, but also just to grow and get more, um, get more people in, it is personalized, personalized invitation where um, we're like, hey, you're three posts away from reaching this, like reaching this status. And um, here are some recommended posts based off of what you've looked at before um, that you may be interested in. And so we're, we're kind of looking at like, how can we best enable them to be involved um, and also make it something that they're even interested in. So it's not just like a, a kind of a baseless, like, invite if that makes right. sense but it sounds like is so is that a semi-automated process those invitations <sighs> and those like those pushes to add new posts or is that largely you using your eyes and your judgment yeah so good question um it has been kind of a mixture of both it was very manual at first um but we've been working or i've been working with um our um our data folks to to get that to be a more automated process where we have that now pulled into a dashboard so i can click through um, and see like where people are at and what they're looking at um what they what they've accomplished thus far and then um the second part of this automation is now sending out um, like a personalized automated email or um, like message inbox message to them. So I um, may die of jealousy about this work that you're doing with your data experts. I'm making random guesses on what are the most indicator best indicators of activity. I do not have science behind me quite yet. But what does it look like in in your world? Um, Like when are you recommending that people have fairly open applications or are you trying to make it fairly exclusive? Yes, so uh, as I said, we start with event and then we end with uh, forum. Like uh, that's that's the journey like when it comes to the, you know, the community and Gold Coffee members. So we based based on different levels, like what Ariana said, uh, it's completely manual for this at this stage, but we will be moving towards the automated side 
to start with what we do is that it's a round table uh, format so we understand how these uh, participants usually share their points their opinions their suggestions and that's the first level of us for us to evaluate how these people would actually lead if they were to lead a chapter and number two the next place is where they come down to our whatsapp group where we try to give them little bit of responsibilities like how they conduct activities within the community that's very closed and post that we try to move them to the forum and then from there we see how they take since i said the chapter is based on niche how they ha actually handle that niche how are they basically bringing content around it how are they bringing people around it how are they building a network around it so basically we try to see all these things the small small level and then based on that we make them the chapter leaders so this kind of makes them feel extremely responsible number one and number two they feel they earned that particular place mm -hmm. so once you move from first level to second level if you are joining whatsapp group it's it's considered that you don't know you have done something right during the session and if you're moving from whatsapp group to the forum you are given a title that you know you would have to maintain and make sure that work is that is attached to your responsibility so once that also comes into picture as a chapter leader you would feel extra responsible to basically make sure that the activities are happening properly and it's not just yourself you also make the other members participate in the uh, forum so and not just that they in fact become our advocates who would actually spread the word where every event actually plays an autoplay where every saturday we do this event and every saturday we have different members from their group to be joining this particular session so I'm again really that, that yeah sorry go ahead there there is always a loop that's and the, the loop doesn't break because you know they always keep on move moving from one uh, hoop to another hoop and that hoop to another hoop and now once they get into this uh, chapter leader position uh, they get to make it they get to expand it they get to do it their own self so like you know the sense of ownership actually like uh, tops it all this is how we basically like identify the leaders right so i'm hearing two votes so far for some level of exclusivity putting in filters along the way to help you identify the most engaged people so you know where to actually put your time and attention because we don't have infinite time and attention um christina just is that the hubspot way too or are you a bit more broad we have a lot of different options so it depends on what specific program you're looking at if you're looking at hugs there are requirements you have to be able to specify is there is there a group that already exists or are you wanting to create a group what is the purpose of the group? What do you hope to, what are the goals for it? How many events do you want to do? What does that look like? And so there's definitely, there's definitely rules for starting one, being a leader of one, and then like continual goals as you go through. For hub fans, we have the, we have the main group that's open to anybody because we want, we want it to be clear that there's no price tag for being a fan. If you're not an enterprise customer, that doesn't mean you're not a HubSpot fan. You could be a starter and not pay us a dollar. You still, if you love HubSpot, we want you to be a part of that. And then your behavior dictates what you get out of it. If you join the group, but you never come back in and you never connect with anybody, then then yes, you're in you're one part of a metric, but that's connections you're not making, that's lessons you're not learning, that's events that you're not you're not attending. So the the baseline hub fans is open to everyone, but it very much is your mileage will vary. The more you put into it, the more you will get out of it. And then as you're doing more, whether it's through the gamified experience or in the community as a community champion, or you're just talking and sharing content online, what you wind up doing is you wind up becoming more and more visible in the community and outside. I do a lot of social listening across all channels. So I'm constantly looking for who loves us, what do they love about us, who hates us, why do they hate us? I'm constantly looking for sentiment everywhere. And so I'm identifying people who are partners who maybe are how, are all talking about us on Reddit, and but because of their name, you'd never know they were a partner. But I'm constantly looking and seeing what questions are they answering? How are they responding? Are they helpful? And for us, from our advocates, another thing that's really important to me is when I when I invite them to go up to the council, is I'm very clear like we are helpers. And so just as in HubSpot, you, HubSpot employees have heart. I want my advocates to have heart too. So if you're responding to people online, you're kind. You're helpful. You're you're not coming from a place of you're stupid if you don't do this. It needs to come from a place of here's a knowledge base article that will walk you through the problem that you have. 
here is how we have done this in the past. Here is how I can help you. DM me if you have any other questions. So we really want them to feel like they're an extension of us because they really are. We really, we really value them. We value their knowledge and we want to, we want to make sure that when they're talking about us, that they're, they're conveying the same thing that we would be conveying if I was saying it myself. Have you codified those values and like that code of conduct to say this, this is how we, we speak in this role? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we have on our landing page for the program. Um, I can share it. Um, but it talks about what hub fans are and how, how we speak to them, what the different levels are and what you get with each. But we're very, very particular about making sure that um, the people who are a part of this, that they understand that we value them and we know the people who are drawn to our product, the people who they want to help, they want to help other people grow. And you see that if you see how people talk about us on Reddit or on LinkedIn or Quora or Twitter, you'll see, you'll see situations where they don't just say like, it's this, they'll go in and say, because of your question, you can see, you can do this in this different way, or I would do a workflow and I would set it up this way. So it's very, it's very instructional. Right. But do you have this similar kind of like documented approach to like, how do we as a community work with each other? Well, more than a documented approach, it's, we are experimental at this point of stage where we wanted to understand, as I said, we are a community platform ourselves. So we wanted to understand how community managers would basically, or community leaders would basically take this particular product, how would they use it? And how would they basically able to spread that knowledge of community through conversations? So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, documented approach, we are just figuring it out how to basically take it forward. But for now, the, 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 the loop is pretty clear. We go from event to WhatsApp and then to forum. This is how right. we kind of function. Right. And, and Ariana, in your world, have you documented out the rules of how you work? Um, somewhat. I think um, we have our, like, all of the requirements and um, the, how, what the process is like uh, for, for our folks, for our members that are joining or want to join. Um, and then from there, I know our community manager, because I'm not in that role specifically, um, is also working on developing kind of more of that, um, the language expectations um, that Christina was touching on a little bit. So, um, but for us, yeah, it's very clear. It's public information um, for anyone on our on our program website. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I went through a process with my own most engaged leaders a couple of years ago to sort of come together with like basically the standard set of values that we would use to open up every single event and the process took more time than i would have liked of course but at the end of the day we came up with something that we all had buy-in or used to open up each of the events and so yeah i think it's it's a worthwhile process um th some questions are now popping in we're going to go over to you michael um you know, he claims to be an old dog seeking new tricks, but I don't believe a word of that. Go for it. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I, I appreciate it and I appreciate all of your perspectives. Uh, I, CMX is my new favorite site and I've attended two events last week and uh, this event today, and I expect to do more. So I'm being hired to uh, manage a community that currently has about 800 members. Uh, it's unique in that it's um, lean data customers, but it's also open to anybody, any professional in the revenue operation space. So it's sales, marketing, customer success in the operation side. And these people mostly work behind the scenes and they're gaining more and more visibility as revenue obviously becomes more important for, for companies to show growth. Uh, they have a, a, a successful annual event. Uh, it was early October this year. It was right during my hiring process. So I was able to attend that and I watched most of the sessions. It had about 3000 attendees over the three days. And they also have an award program, a small award program that started last year that's part of the event. So they're hiring me to grow the community, make sure the event remains successful, offer uh, new programs, new services for the community. Right now, the community exists only on Slack. So one of my first 
challenges is going to be to find the right platform uh, and and make that transition, but also just as general manager, get my arms around this whole thing. My, I have a lot of experience and expertise across marketing and communications, but communities are new to me. I did run a, a customer advocacy program, but it was specifically for customers and from a customer success perspective, not from a community perspective. So I would just appreciate if there was one piece of advice you could give me uh, to be successful in growing this community from each of your perspectives, what would that be? I can answer. Um, I, I work with Maggie Butler, who does a lot with RevOps um, from HubSpot's perspective. And so I've seen a lot of other RevOps communities. The first thing I would do is if you're not already in those communities like RevGenius, MoPros, Pavilion, I would join and I would see where are the gap opportunities. What is currently being offered? Because RevOps is growing, but in some capacities, you're competing for market share. So it's incredibly important to see what other communities are currently offering and where mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for you to create a value add that doesn't currently exist. Right, that's great advice. And it is a new area, but it's quickly becoming more mainstream. So that's, that's excellent. We do, I think this is old positioning, uh, talking about, I think the positioning currently is the first or the only RevOps community, which is not true anymore, right? So we need to be realistic about what we are and where we sit. So that's great advice. Thank you. Um, if I can share, Michael, I can add something, Michael. Uh, I would ask them, um, let's, you know, do like kind of a survey or a, or a meetup or like something to, to ask, what do they need from you? Like, as, as again, not as a, a not the feature side, but and again, as as professionals in their field, what do they need to succeed, and how mm -hmm. you can help them as their uh, a main service. No, that's great. Thank you. What what is the what is the best way you have found? I don't. Other than Slack, I don't think there is a, a, an official or established way to communicate with the community. Uh, what's the best way you found to do that? So Michael, if I may answer your question for that, uh, choosing platform is a little bit tricky. I do agree with you, but uh, what you have to do is like the bet the closer the customers are towards the brand, the better it is always. It's not just sometimes customers are spread across everywhere. They are there on Twitter. They're there on different platforms. If the brand is basically in, in an app or a website, and if you want your members to be there in the app so that, you know, that becomes easier for the members and also for the brands. Like there's a win-win for all the stakeholders because it becomes easy for them to share their knowledge or ask questions. And it becomes easy for the brands as well to address them at the simul simultaneously and have control over data, which is very, very important from both the sides of perspectives and for the members specifically because they don't have to go to different place to get their questions answered. So I think right. that's pretty important when you, you know, consider to go for a platform. Great, thank you. So um, I've got another question here coming in from Aaron White. I don't know if you want to come on mic or if you want me to read that out. No, I can show up here. Um, so my question is regarding non-swag incentives. Um, just largely, you know, I've been thinking about that for a while. I can't even get budget for swag, so might as well look at things that don't cost money um, and genuinely want to provide good value to our group leaders on their careers and things like that. But also struggling to get buy-in for that internally and just kind of with groups in general. Uh, there's there's on paper, uh, you know, support for it. People say, yes, this is important. But uh, in terms of building the right relationships and things like that, it's, it's really uphill. Uh, so just any ideas there would be great. I can answer this. Um, I would look at UGC. Depending on what your community is built on, especially if they want to be subject matter experts or they want to be able to work on their personal brand, if your company has a blog and you have guest bloggers, if there's someone, if there's a group of people in your community that are heavily engaged and you want to give them a pat on the back and make them feel special, okay. creating an opportunity for them to pitch a blog for you that you, they could then be a guest, speak, a guest writer for you, that gets shared. They're going to share it everywhere because they, they want to be a part of it. It could be asking them to be a speaker at a future event. So now you they feel special, but you also don't have to pay for a speaker 
or do anything associated with that. But look for opportunities where what is something that's mutually beneficial? Something, and that's where I find the buy-in is the easiest to get is, hey, this is UGC, this is content we don't have to create. We're giving that opportunity to them so we don't have to create the content. They feel special and we don't have to spend any budget. Also added to that, Aaron, I feel uh, it's very, very important for you to talk to your customers and ask the members and ask what's important for them. You need to understand their goals. That's pretty important. And always members moving from tangent A to tangent B. The progression is also another most important thing for a member to actually move forward. I think these three things, if we are able to do, it's it's pretty. It's going to, the journey is going to be pretty easy. That kind of helps you get the buy-in. Uh, in fact, when there is a member progression, when there is a member who's who you are able to listen to and actually track their goals, that's gold. Yeah, but I'm totally with you, Valerie, which is like, I torture all of my new volunteers by making them have a half hour conversation with me. Um, and the reason I do that is it's just a half hour of intensive listening to get a real sense of what are your particular motivations for participation. Um, and honestly, it always fits into one of three buckets, but it's so important for me to know which of those buckets they go into. So that way I make sure I feed them the right kind of opportunity because some people are there it's all about reputation building. Other people are there because I want to give back to the community. Other people are there because they are looking to, you know, build up some skills and like have that expertise. And as soon as you know what brought people to the table, then you can feed them the right meal. But yeah, it's a it's a complicated part. And the shortcut, sadly, is is no shortcut. I just find I gotta actually put in the time to to talk with those people and really get a sense of it. And then from there, then the hard work after that, of course, is like all right, well, what can I feed into those kinds of buckets so I can keep those pet people engaged over time? So uh, we are running close to the end here. So now I'm going to ask you, of course, the hardest of all questions, which is the success question. So I actually want to split this into two different pieces, which is what does success look like? And the first question is, what does it look like to you in your day-to-day -day job where you feel satisfied and thrilled about the work you're doing? And then I want to say, for your organization, what is the main most important metric that they track? The thing they say, this is what success looks like ultimately. Um, who wants to be brave enough? Those are hard questions. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it, Eli. So this is a very favorite question of mine because su success is always very subjective. So uh, for me specifically, what, what is so successful is that all of us who connected, we did not know each other any time before. All the 70 members came to know each other through this particular uh, user group program. And uh, in fact, we were able to meet a couple of them, like, you know, once the COVID got uh, fine over here. I mean, it's still not, but there is some relaxation. So for me personally, uh, the connection, the, the connection that we are having and the, uh, you know, the understanding that we have is actually successful. Because anytime I can rely on the community leaders or the enthusiasts, in case if I am myself looking for some help, I can always rely upon them. And I think to the organization as well. Uh, in fact, I have the founder here who's listening to uh, this session. Uh, so basically, uh, we, we literally got someone through the session who became our investor down the line. We got someone from the session who, who is going to be a potential customer for us. We are, in fact, actually, we we, uh, we were able to meet someone who is going to create a workshop for community uh, managers, in, uh, you know, so that our vision is actually taken to the next level where we are able to educate more and more community managers. We are going to see more and more community managers coming from Indian, uh, you know, India as a country. This is something that uh, for the organization that's very special, success. And for me, I was able to make meet 70 odd people who I did not or would have wouldn't have met elsewhere. I'm hearing that theme of of the relationships of, of that core community element. Ariana, for you, what makes you satisfied with your job? What makes you feel like I nailed it today? Yeah, you know, I I super agree with the um, the relationship piece. I, I think for me, being able to see the like um, the natural and uh, 
not forced interaction, just the organic um, people wanting to, to be with each other and to connect with each other. And that's where I feel like I've managed success because um, they're wanting to do it with themselves and I don't have to do any prodding. Right. And so, and to me, that's what, what I like, one of the key things for, for community. God, yes, um, not prodding people that, that, what a joy. Yeah, exactly. And, but I will say, I, I think it might be a little bit different um, from a company perspective where it does come down to numbers and ROI and um, what, what are the results that we can actually deliver. And so I think for that, um, the, the biggest kind of metric we're looking at are um, how active, like how many people are active in our community? Um, are they learning more because of the program incentives and the benefits that have been provided to them with those different levels? Um, and how, how have they been leveling up for us? Um, are they, are more of them engaged in those higher levels, um, which means that they're doing more and, uh, around the community. So those are the things that we can actually kind of report on and have numbers around, um, and so to, can you bring that one step farther? How does it tie into organizational success? For you, is that community reducing support costs? Is it yeah. customer acquisition? Like what is most important to your organization around the community output? Yeah. So I think, I think one customer retention is, uh, is a big thing. And so, and I, and I think that also, I know for us, it comes down to, um, reducing support time and, uh, and the, just the amount of cases coming in, you know, and we have, um, we have our platform is tied into where all of our product information lives as well. And so having it in one place um, mm -hmm. and being able to easily reference that um, I, I think is super helpful in addition. So, um, but yeah, customer retention, um, support case, like reduction, um, things like that. Right, that's, that's the company success. For mm -hmm. Christina in HubSpot land, mm -hmm. what's your personal success? My personal success is when the advocates actually feel special. Really great point is I created a program for inbound called the after hour show, which was basically something very similar to this, but the discussion would be based off of the sessions that happened earlier in the day and what they were also looking forward to the next one. And we have a really big evangelist of ours who absolutely loves us, has loved us for years. And I had him be, I asked if he wanted to be the host. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be the one hosting it. I wanted it to be someone who could really embody someone who lives and breathes HubSpot and is able to walk through that. And he has podcasts and he has a YouTube channel and all those things. When he announced, when he was able to finally announce it, he did a post on LinkedIn and he talked about how he's a speaker now. He does all these speaking engagements and he wanted to become a speaker because he went to inbound, like I want to say like 10 years ago. And he made a goal for himself that he was going to be on the main stage at inbound. And the closer he got and the more he did, and he took all the certs and he did all the things, the closer he got to the main stage, but he's like, I'm not Rand Fishkin. I'm not Adam Grant. I'm not Oprah. I'm probably never going to be on the main stage, but he's like, this was, this is my main stage. And so you could tell that I got to give him something that felt like the culmination of a dream for him. And that created amazing content for us. He did, he did, he did just as well as I thought he would do. He mm -hmm. killed it. But that is, that's like a notch for him. Like when he's thinking about like a milestone in his career and his life, like an opportunity that we were able to give him makes the cut. So for me, like the question I keep asking myself is, am I doing what will take, what it will take for these people to feel special? Because I truly believe if you do that, like the numbers come. Like if you take care of them, like all the metrics fall into place because they'll have reasons to return. They'll have reasons to behave the way that, that you need them to be right. um, doing. So, so that's the, for, the blind faith part of it sometimes, mm -hmm. which is important yeah. to community, but the faith is yeah. important. Mm -hmm. HubSpot wise, why does mm -hmm. HubSpot invest in community? It's incredibly inboundy. Um, inbound is all about creating value. So it's intrinsic to the principles that we currently have, but just like any other business revenue matters. We look at MRR, we look at ARR, we look at how many are active, how many are in the group, how many, how many have seeded into responses on social media and, and answered questions about what's your favorite CRM or what email tool should you use? So we're looking at tons of metrics and it needs to move the needle just as in all things. You're not 
I mean, community is an investment and it's long game, but there needs to be return. And, and we look at that. Do you have a fancy dashboard like Ariana does? I have multiple dashboards. I don't have a singular <laughs> one because I live everywhere. Like I live on like Reddit and Twitter and then I have, and then we have Koros. And so like yeah. I look and I look in different places. Yeah, but have... hard to track all that, you know, those mm -hmm. super fans when yeah. their interactions are mm -hmm. in all these different spaces, whether it be mm -hmm. Reddit or social or on mm -hmm. your own platforms. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a spreadsheet or a CRM? <laughs> like, are you updating that in like their HubSpot profile or, or how are you even like keeping those different data sources and giving it one unified view? I, we, we use, we use our own CRM and then I also have spreadsheets. So I'm regularly going in, um, whether it's our community data or our advocacy gamified stats, I have one specific spreadsheet that has like every single metric. And so that way my manager can go in and like, I literally update it daily. So I go in there first things I do. And it's just one of those things where you get into like a rope pattern. So like the first thing I do when I start my day is I search HubSpot on Twitter. And I just look and see what the organic conversations are and what I need to be thinking about and who do I need to have someone respond to this comment or do I need to escalate something? And then I go into our gamified opportunity. Are, how are people doing? Are, are we seeing a slip? Are we seeing a decline? What is happening? Do I need to add new challenges? Do I need, is there an event coming up that I, sh I should give an extra boost to by doing a challenge so people can get points for RSVPing for it? Things like that. So we're clearly going to have to do a follow-up one day where it's a bit of a day in the life because I want to do a bit of a show and tell. I want to see that dashboard page. I'm <laughs> so curious. I want to see that spreadsheet. I'm like, I want to see how do other people manage that? Cause I have a spreadsheet too. I'd love to see how others are managing that. Um, but here we are, we're over time. I'm super grateful to all three of you for joining us today. Um, and by especially, cause I know the time zones are murderous and I appreciate your flexibility here. We are going to be doing similar kind of interview events over the next couple of months. We'll be back in January, February, and March, which means we're looking for fresh meat. We need some talent. So we've got some great people here in the room. Um, if you're interested in being one of our interviewees in the future event, drop me a quick ping, you know, email if you got it, using direct messages right here in the system. Um, and I would love to talk with you about how we can bring you into a subsequent event. Um, otherwise, super grateful for everyone for joining us here today. Um, before we go, keep before doing we the go. great work and go for it. Before we go, we promised back to take a picture, uh, screenshot. Uh, ah, right, we can thank for you. The end of the year, uh, end of the year CMX Connect uh, recap. Um, so unless you don't want to be a part of the recap. Please like do something funny or just hello. And I will take a screenshot. Cheese. Thank you. Thank you everyone who has been. Um, this was amazing. And we're definitely looking at to learn more in the next events. Thank you. Love it. Thank you so much. And uh keep inspiring me. I'm gonna keep on stealing all of your best ideas. Um it's the reason I am one of the co-hosts of this chapter is it gives me a great excuse to pick the brains of my fellow community managers. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. Thank Daddy. you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank Piper, thanks so much Thank for the recommendation. Really I'll definitely follow up on that. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye-bye.